All right, so I'm going to show you guys how to uh, use Newton's second law and free body diagrams just to, to solve just about any force problem. Um, so a strategy that works for me and should get you most of the way there for most problems is um, you always want to start the problem by reading it carefully. Understand what's happening, understand what's being asked, understand how many objects are involved, time frames, and coordinate systems that you'll be using. Uh, that's important. Um, then you want to draw a sketch of what's happening. It's always important to draw a picture. And on your sketch or just next to it, you want to draw a free body force diagram and um, just show all the forces acting on an object. Then you want to perform vector addition on your free body force diagram and apply Newton's second law. If you have, you know, unbalanced forces rather than complete cancellation, you will have a net force and then you set that equal to mass times acceleration. Once you do that, solve for the unknown. Let's put this into action. So here's a, a sample pulley system. And the question is, what is the force required to support the weight of a 50 kilogram object? Step one, draw a free body diagram. Well, you've got the weight of the mass hanging downward, so you're going to have mg downward. And then the string looks like it's pulling up in four places, so you're going to have tension times four up. Well, let's do vector addition on that diagram. You know that uh, the mass is hanging, it's not accelerating up or down, so you know that these four t's upwards are going to equal mg. And um, so you're going to have call the up direction positive, the down direction negative. So your net force then would be uh, 4t minus mg. Well, let's apply Newton's second law. Since we're not accelerating, we know that the net force is equal to zero. Therefore, 4t minus mg is equal to zero. So 4t has to equal mg. So then you can solve for tension. And tension, in this case, would be um, 123 newtons. Let's do some more. person stands on an elevator. The elevator begins to move briefly. The scale that they're standing on, silly elevator with scales in it, uh, reads 75% of the person's weight. Let's calculate the acceleration of the elevator. So, again, step one, draw a picture. There's already a picture there. Step two, draw a free body diagram. So we'll make a dot that represents the person's body. The person has weight, mg. And they said this scale, well, the scale is going to be providing a normal force upwards. And they said that that reads 75% of the weight. So this upwards force that I'm going to draw is not going to be as great as the downwards force. All right, now that we have our free body diagram, let's perform vector addition on it. Let's call the downward direction positive because I like positive numbers. So we add up all the forces and we get... Um, the downward force of mg minus the normal force is going to equal mass times acceleration. Well, we already know that the normal force is 0.75 times the weight, so we can say mg minus 0 0.75 mg equals ma. Well, look at that. We've got m's in every term, so if you divide it by m, it's gone. So then you solve. You're at the last step. You solve for a, and a becomes um, g times 1 minus 0.75 in the downward direction. So you must be accelerating downward with a rate of 9.8 times 0.25. So we're accelerating downward uh, at about, uh, my math is correct, 2.45 meters per second downwards. Let's do one more. Uh-oh, blocks on an incline. This will challenge our method. All right, so we already got the picture. Um, the question is, what will the acceleration of the frictionless system be where m1 equals 2m2? Well, let's draw our free body force diagrams. Let's first start with m1. I'm 
just going to go ahead and draw the diagrams right on the object itself. M1 is going to have a downwards force, M1G, and it's not falling through the surface, so it's going to have a normal force, and it's being pulled by a rope with tension. Then let's go over to M2 and do the same thing. Let's draw a free body diagram there. We've got another mass. Uh, M2 is going to be experiencing gravity. Call it M2G. And it's also going to be experiencing tension. Um, we don't really know whether or not the magnitude is going to be greater than or equal to or less than M2G yet. So let's just keep that in mind that we might have to revisit this vector. I'll make it a little full, but we, we don't quite know. It could be bigger or less than M2G. Well, let's find out. Next step, vector addition. So let's look at the um, vectors in M1's free body diagram. We know that whatever happens, this block is it's not going to jump off of the ramp, and it's not going to go through the ramp. So it's not going to accelerate in the direction of, uh, that's perpendicular to the ramp. So we know that any perpendicular component force of its weight would have to be canceled out by the normal force. So these two forces and components thereof are gone, leaving us with only this downward component, down the ramp component of mg, which, if that's 30 degrees, then this is M1G sine 30. We've got that going downwards and tension going up. So then on block one, F net on M1 is going to equal, you know what, we better define our coordinate system. This thing is either going to go clockwise or counterclockwise. So I'm going to call our coordinate system of uh, the positive direction will be uh, clockwise along the surface of this triangle. And then you know, anything that's in that clockwise direction we'll call positive, and in the counterclockwise direction we'll call negative. So now we've got uh, T upwards, and we've got this component downwards, M1G sine 30. Now, according to Newton's um, second law, all of that has to equal m1 times a. So we're done with block one. Let's look at block two. And on this diagram, we've got m2g in the positive clockwise direction. We'll say f net on m2. It's going to be m2g minus t equals m2a. So now we have a system of two equations. There's your two equations. And we're trying to solve for a. You know that they have to experience the same a. So let's combine these two equations. I'm going to have to do some, some substitution and some math. I can tell already if I add up both equations 1 and 2, if I treat it like a giant addition problem, then my t's are going to cancel out. And I'm going to have m2g minus m1g sine of 30 equals m1 plus m2 times a. And at this point, you're at this step where you solve. Uh, you can solve for a by dividing both sides by m1 plus 2. Now remember uh, this relationship that m1 is just 2m2. So then uh, you can substitute. Every time you see m1, you can just substitute in 2m2. So let's rewrite uh, the bottom here. We've got um, 2m2s right there. So let's call this whole thing 3m2. And let's call this um, 2m2. Now, sine of 30 is just a half. If you look at just the 
the top line of this, you've got M2G minus M2G. So you have zero. So our acceleration of the system is zero meters per second squared. 